author of Best Team Money Can Buy, back here on The Rich Eisen Show. How are you, Molly? Hi, I'm, I'm just waking up to all the craziness. <laughs> How are you? <laughs> so I'm fine. So what, what did happen between the Dodgers and Mattingly between the end of their series with the Mets and today? Yeah, it was a mutual parting of ways. I think um, Mattingly was under contract for for the next year. I think they would have been comfortable adding another year onto that extension. But at a certain point, if 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 you know what you've got and you're not willing to commit long term, I think it's best for both parties involved to move on. Especially because uh, Jeffrey Loria in Miami, he wants to hire Don Mattingly yesterday uh, to manage his team. So Mattingly has another option, um, and I and I believe he'll get you know four year deal or something like that to go and manage the Marlins. So before we, we, we turn the page to that, why didn't it work out with Mattingly in Los Angeles, Molly? You know, that's a great question. I just think it, there was a lot of oh, – there were, there were some hard feelings. Um, you know, they, they came into a situation where he had been on the hot seat for so long. Um, it just felt like every year, every time they would lose a series or, or whatever, it would be, oh, Mattingly this, Mattingly that. And um, you know, he didn't appreciate 2013 when his option for 2014 vested. And the Dodgers didn't announce it, um, you know, and sort of let it let him hang there and dangle in the breeze. That 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 wasn't very well appreciated. I think he just got tired of of the of the stress of it, of just being it being constant source of drama. And um, and yeah, I think I think he would have come back. I, there there was some radio silence. Um, they the, the season ended last week or, or whenever it was, and and um, they they didn't reach. Neither side spoke to each other, and I think. If if the uh, front office had come back and said, "Yeah, we want to we want to keep you around. We'll give you another year. We want to do this," if they'd done that right away and shown that their commitment to him, he would have stayed. But I think as as the silence sort of went on, um, you know, I imagine that he probably approached them and said, "Look, we got it. We've got to get some clarity on this because I don't want to d- dangle in the breeze and then have you know the Marlins and everybody else hire someone else in the meantime." So the the Dodgers management was just content to just say okay don we'll we'll chat with you eventually i mean nobody no nobody... no i think they did i think that they did they chatted this week okay um, i mean obviously they started chatting but after uh, a period where they didn't talk to each other is what you're saying yeah i mean i don't think it was that long of a period of time because uh i, I forget when the i'm sort of blocked it out when the dodgers <laughs> got eliminated um i guess it's only been a week or so jeez right made really quick work of the cubs um so we're talking about just a couple days um, not not like a, a very long time. Well, um, when it comes down to it, the general manager, the new general manager, and the new management right. team that is there, the the concept of saber metrics and shifts and things things of that nature, mm-hmm. was Mattingly being told what lineups to play, and he was forced to do that. Was that yeah. actually going down here in Los well, Angeles? I, I think so. With Mattingly, he was on board with a lot of the with a lot of the saber stuff and the and the shifting and the spin rates and all that. So it wasn't like a Mike Sosha Jerry Depoto situation where there were butting heads over it. But yes, they're very involved. Um, they they make personnel decisions and and they weigh in on lineups. They're not calling down to the dugout and and yelling at at him or telling him to pull a pitcher like I've heard some GMs have done. Um, they're not so they're not like that involved. But yeah, there were some there were some moves that were some players that they clearly favored like a Yasmani Grandal. Um, and and they they wanted him in the lineup and and you know the problem is at a certain point um, you've got to be able to trust your manager to, to do things and I think uh, you know he he might enjoy going to a situation like in Miami where he where he has more control. Molly Knight, author of Best Team Money Can Buy, joining me here on the Rich Eisen Show. So a couple more questions: Who do you think the Dodgers sure. look at for their next manager? I think they're going to want to get somebody young and, and inexperienced in there who will totally be a conduit to what they're trying to do. I think um, Gabe Gabe Kapler has been has been mentioned. Um, he's he's in the organization now. He's sort of like a guru for health and nutrition and overall like behavioral stuff. And he's really into sabermetrics. And um, yeah, that 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 makes sense to me. Um, it's interesting. I know Dodger fans were really um, mad at Don Mattingly, and I, I was always sort of confused by that because um this this team that he managed was very dysfunctional a lot of egos a lot of drama and and knowing how to do to put out a, a lineup or how to manage in late games or the saber metric stuff i mean that was just like the tip of the iceberg of, of what what that job entailed i think i thought he did a phenomenal job even you know always covering for his players um you know in the media taking the heat for things um, you know, maybe in a way he was he was too nice I and mean, he could have aired people out and he never did. Even even in game five when Keith Year was yelling at him in the dugout. Um and afterwards, you know, he, he deflected it and, and, and didn't say what was really going on. Um, you know, 
those sorts of things that make you really popular with players, but maybe maybe fans see that and say, oh, you're an idiot and this and that. You know, I, I don't know. Um, but I know that um, you'd be hard find, you'd be hard pressed to find the guy more respected um, in a, in a clubhouse and and someone who knows how to handle egos better than Don Mattingly. Well, I mean, you know, you you know, you're preaching to the choir on that front. So yeah. so all the, all of my list, this show's listeners and viewers in South Florida should get ready for Mattingly to be putting yeah. on a Miami Marlins uniform. Absolutely, I think. I know Jeff Loria is a fan of Mattingly's. I mean, who is? Everyone's a fan of Mattingly's. Just, just um, from his reputation as being one of the all-time, an all-time great player, and also, you know, an all-time great person. You meet him, and you can't believe that he's, um, you know, he's Don Mattingly because he's just so down to earth. with like a guy you would run into at, at the corner bar or the corner coffee shop, which is like not impressed with himself at all. Um, and so, yeah, I, I would imagine that they. That, that this was that this mutual parting of ways was done so that to free him up so he could go sign a deal with them tomorrow. And that means you know, Giancarlo Stanton's going to have Mark McGuire uh, helping him out. Is that is he bringing the staff yeah, with him? I don't know. Um, I, I'm not really sure. I would imagine. I saw that Tim Wallach uh, um, uh, interviewed for the Washington job yesterday. They're interviewing a lot of people, so that doesn't mean that for sure going there. Mm -hmm. um, but but I, I mean I don't know if they if they retain some staff if they. If they um, let them all go, I'm not sure. Um, Mattingly's uh, obviously not short on friends in the baseball world, right. so it'll be interesting to see what kind of a team he builds. And frankly, it'll be a nice thing for him to go and work with a bunch of young guys. I know he really enjoyed that. He loved when he was managing the Dodgers before uh, when they weren't very good, but before they had all the um, you know superstars who had already been paid. He loves uh, the young kids who who are motivated, who are hungry. Um, I think it'll be a good fit for him if, as long as um, you know Jeff, Jeff Loria doesn't uh, <laughs> that doesn't, doesn't uh, trade off all their all their good players. Last question: uh, Do you think there's any shot Ripken gets a gig with the Washington Nationals? Like he, I don't know. Um, you think anything? I kind of feel like they're probably going to go in a different direction than that, given that the, that that sort of feels like a similar hire to Matt Williams for me. Um, I kind of feel like they're going to want to go with somebody who's who has more experience. Um, but we'll see. Yeah. We'll see what happens. Molly, thanks for calling, and I appreciate it. Yeah, thanks for having me, Rich. You bet. At Molly underscore Knight. Go get her book, The Best Team Money Can Buy. The Rich Eisen Show, weekdays at noon Eastern. On Audience. <laughs> 